A couple days ago, we had the anniversary, the tw I believe it was the 31-year anniversary of the seventh season premiere of L.A. Law. If you don't remember L.A. Law, you really need to check out L.A. Law. It is one of the most, it's a, it's a, it was a show that was ahead of its time and was really well done, uh, a lot of, uh, direct, uh, done by David E. Kelly, who, who would later go on to do Ally McBeal and The Practice, and it was also done by the same people that, uh, Stephen Bochco, who gave us, a, gave us, uh, uh, Hill Street Blues, NYPD Blue, The Practice. No, he, that was David E. Kelly that did that, but um, it's a great show all the way through, man. Like, it was a real fun show. And this particular episode I want to cover here kind of co ties back into what we've been talking about uh, just in the last couple of minutes here. So you have an episode called L.A. Lawless. It's the seventh season premiere, and you have all these different storylines going on here. But the one thing that people remember from this episode, or may not remember from this episode, there's a subplot where Arnie Becker's character is basically involved in a case. Basically, the story is that he's helping this guy out, representing this guy who is dressed up in a Homer Simpson costume. Uh, he's getting sued by this, the comp by the steam park company called Family Land. And so Dan Castle and Ananda plays this character, and it's pretty much what you think it is. I'm going to let you see a little bit of the clips here to show you kind of what we're, si we're talking about here. Anything to stop my life from feeling like a cartoon. Arnie Homer Simpson. How you doing? Arnie Becker is and um, and uh, Roxanne, uh, Susan Rattan, uh, they're walking into this room and she's introducing him to Homer Simpson. Now what you see is a guy dressed up in a Homer Simpson costume. It's literally a Homer Simpson costume, with the but with it's literally the design of Homer from The Simpsons, except that inside of there is the actual voice of Homer Simpson, Dan Castellaneta, who plays this character. So the guy's name is David Champion, and. Um, uh, there's this throughout the episode. There's this subplot with him, and he's he remains in this costume for the majority of the episode. Mr. Champion, is that you inside there? Oh, it's my favorite shyster. <laughs> I think it's so. Uh, not he gets he takes it off at the end of the episode, but it's just a funny idea because remember, L.A. Law and The Simpsons are owned by 20th Century Fox, so it made sense why they have this character on there because. Fox would allow him to do this because, of course, the Ellie Law and the Simpsons are owned by the same company. But let's keep going. With How soon after the incident were you fired from the amusement park? I refuse to answer on the grounds it might incriminate me. Mr. Champion, I am trying to prepare you for what you'll be asked on the witness stand. Family Land is a major Hollywood power. They will try anything to undermine your credibility. Figures. Another victim of an organization that takes its best and brightest and dims their bulbs. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know it was loaded. <laughs> and you have this guy in a little Homer Simpson costume, just like tossing his hair and all that. Like I think that's it's like it's so bizarre, but that's part of the charm of L.A. Law. A lot of bizarre stuff happens on here, but it works out in the show's favor. I think it's a really clever, smart, f funny stuff here. Like I love how they say Family Land is a is a powerful company in here. You know they're probably you know they they probably wanted to say Disney, but. They couldn't do it then, but um, it's funny now because now both of these shows are owned by Disney. But uh, I just love the idea that th that Dan is using his Homer Simpson voice in here because we find out later. I, I think later on he actually uses his regular voice in the episode, but but uh, it's just funny that he's talking like this and he's talking straight up like Homer Simpson. Like I think it is very, it's actually it's very clever, very funny stuff. And you got to give Dan Castellaneta a lot of credit for doing it like this because uh, it's pretty funny stuff. <laughs> Uh, now take off the head. Uh-huh. Another trick question. I'm not allowed to take my head off in public. That's why Family Land gave me the heave-ho in the first place. So the whole idea is that he can't take this off because Family Land, the company that fired him, told him that he can never take this off. So it's a weird... It's a weird scenario to put, and that's kind of the charm of what L.A. Law was like around this time. This was a show that could do those kind of insane things that would later become more prevalent in David E. Kelly's Ally McBeal later on down the road. The fact is, there's, there's still an injunction against you wearing this costume at all until this case is settled. As your attorney, I could be held in contempt. Uh-oh, gotta go. Mr. Champion! And this is great right uh. here. It literally cuts to him using the to using the urinal is in the bathrooms inside this place. Like he's doing it with the costume on. It's just like, where is the zipper for this thing that he's allowing himself to do this? Or like, it's so it's so bizarre. But it's again, that's part of the charm of the show. Last night I had to take a whiz three times, but I was so tired I only got out of bed twice. Can I ask you a stupid question? Only if you want a stupid answer. 
I love that. I love that. Can I ask you a stupid question only if you want a stupid answer? Like, when would Homer ever say that? Like, I think Homer would be the one asking the stupid question in the in real, real, reality here. But, um, so basically they're talking about what it's going to be like in the courtroom. And I take that back. It does actually show him in the bathroom taking the, taking the costume off. And, and it, as, uh, throughout the course of the episode, they have little elements, little segments where they show Homer in the costume like there's a, there's video camera footage of the homer the homer in the costume being taken down inside the park and there's a part where they get him to they get the the jurors to wear the homer mask on there and i thought is i thought that was pretty is and it's a very funny shot too ladies and gentlemen of the jury many of you are experiencing a loss of peripheral vision claustrophobia a lack of ventilation and adequate hearing only part of the working conditions under which Mr. Champion has to perform. And add to this a 30-pound suit made of three-quarter inch polyfoam, restricted mobility, 100 degree temperatures, park visitors jostling for photographs, and extreme nausea. To say you would be in discomfort is putting it mildly. I'd say these circumstances are enough to cause anyone to pull off his head. Ladies and gentlemen, you may do the same. Oh. <laughs> It's a hilarious scene seeing all these jurors wearing this crate, wearing this Homer hat on Ed. But uh, it's to serve a point for what, for what the case is supposed to be about. And you know what? That actually that actually kind of makes sense because keep in mind this was back in 1992. I'm sure that by then, like theme parks, specifically Disney and Universal, had better have now have better ways of putting the costumes on there because I think some of them now have fans inside of them and all that. But like. Back then, you didn't really have a whole lot of that because I think a lot of people thought that once you put the costume on, you have that little space where the air is supposed to come in. Like it's more like, um, if, like um, kind of like that Grinch costume I wore yesterday in the movie stop episode. Like, um, like there's areas where you could feel like the there's a little bit of a, uh, a pocket where you can breathe a little bit. And like some of these Halloween costumes they have now, like the inflatable costumes with like the battery packs and the fans inside of them, like. Uh, they didn't have this kind of stuff back then for the most part, so it's kind of interesting to see how they handled this in this episode. Uh, episode. And I thought that was actually very well done. And I just wanted to talk about that because I just thought that was so amusing The, with the use of the Homer Simpson costume and not only the a that, but the actor himself being used in that episode. It's, re it's really fun to see that. And it was interesting to see that be brought up on here, and I wanted to check that out again. So uh, nothing too special about that one. I just thought that was kind of amusing to bring back up here.